professional in doing that. And what we're going to talk about today is we're first going to begin talking about that ROI, that return on investment for financial services organizations. I mean, that's what you're in business for. So we're going to talk specifically about that ROI and doing that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to talk about mentoring's popularity that we have seen among not only finance professionals but financial services organizations overall. We've been in the mentoring space for over 25 years. So we've been working with financial organizations for many of those 25 years and doing that. And then we're actually going to help you in giving you some tips on setting up your mentoring program. We're going to talk about some tailored type of matching that you want to consider within the finance uh, profession. And then we're going to give you some tips on actually how to manage your program as you go through. And then we're going to take you through some case studies that, that we have in, in doing that. You know, one of the things that's, that's interesting when we think about, you know, mentoring and we think about the financial, you know, professional in doing this, we know mentoring works so well for the financial professional. And the reason for that is, you know, there are so many different complexities and regulations that come through from a finance standpoint. And, you know, individuals need to not only understand those regulations, but they also need to understand, you know, and work with their colleagues and say, how are we going to work this so that, you know, our organization can, can work through these. Now, that could be a, a small regulation that comes through or a small change such as a, a tax code that has changed or it could be a big one that comes through. Remember 2002 when Sorbanes-Oxley came in? I mean, trying to figure out how to put that through the organization, work with it, and get all those things taken care of was very, very important to do that. So at this point in time, Sarah, would you take us through our first poll, please? Sure, Judy. Okay. Our first poll is, please select one of the following. I am in financial services company, and we have a mentoring program. I am in a financial services company, but no mentoring program yet. Not in financial services company, but launched or are launching a program. Or finally, I am considering launching a mentoring program for the finance department. Okay, we're up to 70% voted. And we're almost to 80%. Okay. Well, Judy, it looks like most of our attendees have chosen, I am not in financial services, but I've launched or I'm launching a program. Okay. All right. Well, uh, if you are not in financial services, but you're launching a program, we hope we're going to give you some, some good tips in doing that. And for those of you that are in financial services, but you don't have any mentoring program in place yet, we're going to hope that we can do the same thing for you as, as we go forward. Okay. Well, um, as we move forward, we want to talk about that ROI for your organization because we know how important that is. That's important for any organization, but especially for a financial organization. And what we have found is there are several areas in which that return on investment can be realized. And one of those areas is around talent acquisition. There's a very competitive market for financial professionals. And we find in working with our clients that that talent acquisition is very important. You know, when they go and they talk to individuals about, you know, coming to work with their organization, mentoring is seen as an extra perk. We know that, you know, as you go college recruiting, that you want to go to your top schools, you want to get your top recruits there. And we have found in talking with the recruitment departments that having a mentoring program in place 
helps the organization to differentiate themselves. They let the candidates know that they have an ongoing mentoring program so that the candidates know they can begin and be a part of that program as soon as they come on board. And this is important to those candidates because they know they can't stop learning. And if they know the organization has a mentoring program in place, they have found that that is a real plus. This can be a great asset for your recruitment team within your organization. Another area that we have seen that organizations have seen a return on investment is around retention, especially when it has to do with onboarding or those new hires that come in. Studies are showing that organizations with mentoring programs, especially, again, when it's tied to onboarding or new hires, have higher rates of retention. Employees feel better about an organization that provides them with a qualified mentor because it shows the organization cares about them from the very beginning of their career as they walk in the door. In addition, employees who work with organizations that have a mentoring program in place feel better about their ongoing career development opportunities and the career path the organization has laid out for them. This definitely adds to retention. And another area has to do with career development. We know, working with financial services clients, that career development is one of the biggest needs for financial professionals. It's important for finance professionals to know there's a way for them to go up the ladder. You know, for many individuals, especially those new recruits that you're bringing in, they've got ambition, and first of all, which is probably being able to pay off all those student loans that they had. Pay scales for financial people are one of the widest, but people have to be developed to be able to move up that career ladder and what they're doing. We're actually going to kind of illustrate some typical career paths in the banking industry, and, and that may not be your industry, but we just want to kind of show you uh, some of the things that we have discovered in doing that. Now, from a succession planning standpoint, this becomes very important to the organization because they need to know the talent pipeline is full, it's ready, and it's available as they're going forward. And another area that's a return on investment for the organization is around knowledge sharing. Knowledge sharing is vital for the financial professional, whether it's on a local level, a national level, or an international level. And again, because of all those new compliances, whether they're big or small, and the regulations that are encountered, the financial professional has got to keep in contact with other colleagues within their organization and find ways to, again, figure out how the organizational culture is going to work on these. You know, this could be a situation where, you know, you've got a large type of complexity that's going to be implemented within the organization and you need to find out how that's going in all parts of the organization. There was a recent article in Chief Learning Officer Magazine and IBM was quoted in there and they said, we ask mentors and mentees to continuously exchange knowledge using all the data that they have through their colleagues and everybody else. So it's a situation where these financial individuals have got to be in touch with each other. It's a little different when you're talking about, say, a marketing department or sales or product development or whatever it might be, because those particular departments may only be focusing on what affects their function or their uh, department and what they're doing. But when you're in a financial function and a part of a financial services organization, you've got to look at all of those areas. So being able to share knowledge is very, very important. It makes that financial professional much more knowledgeable and much more valuable to the organization and what they're doing. Now, here's some examples that we have seen in financial professionals and financial organizations and what you're doing. And you may look at some of these and, in fact, because there was a large percentage of saying that they weren't specifically in a financial organization, 
one of the things that you're going to see is that even though it may say you know commercial banking or whatever you're going to have a function within your organization that still needs to look at risk management lending retail investment legal and compliance and so on so these are just examples of what we know are typical in a financial services organization and you know again maybe very typical in a financial function whether it's manufacturing or retail or whatever it might be in, in doing this and taking it forward so again here's looking at movement of careers and what it might look like inside of a lending bank or what it might look like inside of a retail bank or investment banking and again these are just examples of careers around banking and we also know that analysts may never go all the way to managing director or a teller to the chief operating officer and individuals come in and they may not start at the bottom they may start in as an associate manager or commercial lender depending on where your level of expertise is as you're doing this but again these are just typical careers that we have seen inside of financial services organizations so we've talked about that ROI for the financial services organization or a financial function so what I want to talk about now is why is mentoring so effective for financial professionals and there really is a lot of reasons for that one of those has to do with the fact that mentoring helps an individual turn theory into practice individuals come out of school they're you know finance graduates and they've gotten a lot of information in education doing that but what they've also got to know is how does that relate to our organization and the culture within our organization that's one of the greatest things about mentoring is not just learning skills and knowledge areas but how those skill and knowledge areas work within a specific organization and being able to do that it, when it goes to a career path again we talked about how important that is for the financial services professional and you know being able to look at that and tie it to a career ladder knowing the organization is going to start them out and has a career path in place that they can work through becomes very very effective also when we talk about you know networking what we're talking about here is we talked about this a little bit we talked about knowledge sharing but it's you know it's even more than that when you're talking about organizations that have you know national or global particular um, types of networks that they're going on one of the greatest things about mentoring is it allows the mentee to build and expand their own network and the more they can build and expand that network the better it is as an asset for their career growth that they go through and then it supports continual learning one of the things that we did with a, a class that I was working with uh, a couple of years ago is, is there was a particular knowledge area and they were needed to get to a training class to do this but they weren't going to be able to get there right away and the idea was their world was going to stop until they could get to this training class so we stopped and what we did is we came up with 11 different ways that they could get development now they still need to go to that training class eventually but that they could be getting learning and development while they're waiting for that training class 11 different ways and a lot of it was around mentoring and knowledge sharing so the point was that their role didn't have to stop in what they were doing the other thing that we find that mentoring allows is you know we believe that in mentoring partnerships the mentees should drive the partnership and drive the conversation but they also share knowledge with the mentors so the mentee is not only learning as they're doing this but one of the things we hear from our mentors is they really are surprised and enjoy how much they're learning from the mentees so the mentor and mentee are actually sharing knowledge as they're going through this so it's continual learning for both of them as they go through this now one of the things that we also know is that makes 
mentoring effective for financial professionals is making sure you've got a web-based solution. And the reason that becomes very, very important is that in this situation, you've got you know professionals that are tech savvy. I mean, this is part of what they do. They are ready at any point in time to share the knowledge that they have in going forward and in, in doing that. They work with computers all day long. Another quote from IBM and that Chief Learning Officer magazine talked about the fact that technology can be helpful for mentoring even though many times mentoring is thought of as only a face-to-face -face situation. The way people work has changed dramatically and technology enabled speed is a key ingredient to how our employees get things done. It also was talking about the fact that when they face clients, and this would be for any financial services organization or any financial professional, when they face a client, they need information and they need it quickly. They need to be able to understand that client's industry and they need to be able to have the latest most efficient data about their specific organization and their function and what they're doing. One of the things we know about financial professionals is because they use technology on a daily basis, they're comfortable with it. And, you know, they can access information quickly through technology. They don't want to have to wait to um, research it. They want to be able to get to it quickly. In addition to that, we also know that a web-based solution allows a great solution for national and global workplaces. So, you know, you're able to take that network, you're able to expand it in what you're doing, and, you know, you've got as many resources as you can network with when you've got a web-based solution. You know, it may not be just one mentor. You know, it may be that mentee is going to connect with, two or three mentors and being able to do that, where one mentor helps them in one area, another helps them in career, another helps them in a specific knowledge area and what we're doing. As we go on, one of the things that we want to look at is what are you going to do in being able to match your mentors and mentees from a financial situation and taking that forward? So we're going to give you some tips on that and on your program. The first thing that we think you need to consider when you are matching mentors and mentees in finance professionals is around their career level. And we're going to get into a little more depth of that and give an example of that in just a moment. You also want to think about the skills and competencies that are required. And we're going to give you a little bit of information on that. And then what department are they in and what department do they need to interact with most within their finance area? And then is location something that needs to be considered? We also want you to think about the concept of distance mentoring and not always assume that the match has to take place within their same location. Uh, I actually this morning was just talking with someone about all the benefits of distance mentoring as we were going forward. and. One of the great things is breaking down the silos within an organization and allowing people to talk to each other and to exchange knowledge, that knowledge sharing, that networking, and doing that across a nation, doing that across a globe, and taking that forward. So keep in mind how it is you want your financial professional to grow, and you know that growth might be getting them to interact with another financial function on a global basis or a national basis in what they're doing. So one of the things, that, and I mentioned that we're going to give you an example about some things you want to think about in uh, matching for career levels. This is just an example um, that we have worked through with organizations in which the matching of the mentee with the mentor was a minimum of two levels up. So in this case, you've got a mentee who's an analyst or an associate, and, and two levels up from that would be a vice president. So the vice president is the mentor, and again, that's two levels up from the analyst or the associate. That's not a hard and fast rule, but that's one that we've seen that works quite well, is matching a mentee with a mentor that's two levels up. 
The same thing would happen then with the vice president and two levels up for them could might be the director or managing director in, in doing that. So again, keep in mind that career level and also keep in mind that this type of matching and pairing is around career development. It's not around necessarily skill development, but it's around career development. And again, what we've seen is that matching a mentor and mentee, where the mentor is two levels up from the mentee, works best of all. Now, the other thing is we talked about that you need to think in terms of matching and pairing the mentors and mentees based on skills and competencies. And look at some of these skills and competencies that we're seeing more and more that are a part of the financial professional and what they need to know. I was actually uh, giving a talk with a financial organization. It was kind of a, a uh, networking organization. There were probably oh, 50 different organizations that were there and, and represented there. And as we were going through some exercises and doing some things, one of the things that came up was a pretty common remark that, you know, when they first started in finance, one of the things they, you know, they, they used the knowledge that they had gotten in the university and it was pretty focused around, you know, specific accounting practices or risk or M&A or whatever it might be. But they began to find that as they climbed that career ladder, more and more, they needed some of the other skills, what might be called the softer skills or the leadership skills, the communication skills, the strategic planning, the marketing, those types of things. So what once was specific you know, skills that were part of their uh, area of expertise that they came out of school with weren't working anymore. So those are some of the things that going up the career ladder, you have got to think about. Where is someone in their career? Where are they going? And you've got to look at some of those skills that they might need, not just you know what's specific uh, to their particular function, but what are they going to need to get them up that career ladder? So at this point in time, Sarah, will you take us through our next poll? Sure, Judy. For this next question, please type your answer in the chat area of the toolbar. We'll give you about two minutes to answer. The question is, what is the biggest skill gap your organization is currently struggling with? We'll be posting the results on the Mentoring Thought Leaders Club on LinkedIn later today. You can search it on LinkedIn and click Ask to Join. Got a couple of people that are typing their answers in under questions instead of in the chat box, but we'll gather them all up. Thanks, Judy. I'm seeing a lot under leadership. I am too, yeah. Okay, you have about one minute left before we gather the results. See, we're back at those soft skills again. Presentation, communication, leadership. Yeah. Okay, you have about 30 seconds left to type your answer in. Okay, Judy, I think it's time to close this poll. I believe that the most prevalent answer was leadership. Right. We're, again, just like just what we talked about uh, on the slide before this was it's, it's those softer skills, it's those leadership skills, it's the communication, it's all of these things. So again, when you are thinking in terms of your matching and pairing criteria, think in terms of that, you know, 
what level they're going to be going to, and then what's going to be required to get them there. You know, one of the other great things about mentoring is it's a very proactive way to develop people. So a lot of times someone gets in a job and then they get the development that they need. But with mentoring, you can think about these things ahead of time and get people matched and they can get some of that development they need so that, again, going back to that return on investment uh, for the organization and looking at it and, you know, thinking in terms of that succession pipeline and having people ready. It's a great way in which to do that. Okay, thank you all very much. And as Sarah said, we will be uh, posting those results so that you can see what we're looking at and doing that. Okay, one of the things that we really want to do now is to take you forward and give you some tips on how to put your program together, how to manage it, and how to ensure it's going to be successful in, in what you're doing. The very first thing, and, and when we talk to any client at any point in time, we you know talk about the fact that you first have to identify what are your business objectives and how you're going to measure results. We believe that mentoring is a business strategy. This is not just a warm, fuzzy, feel-good program. Mentoring is a business strategy. So you need to identify up front exactly what business objectives you're going to tie your mentoring to, what business objectives your mentoring program will support, and then that will tell you how you're going to measure success in what you're doing. We actually have a strategic planning program called MORE which stands for Mentoring, Organizational Readiness, and Effectiveness. And we take people through a step-by-step -step process to help them identify objectives and measurements. And also, because we've been doing this for 25 years, we've identified those things that you need to have in place to ensure that you don't hit those pitfalls when you roll out your program in doing this. But you've got to start with those business objectives and measurements before you roll out your program. Then the next thing you've got to do is qualify your applicants. And make sure you understand what we mean by qualified. We believe a mentor is an individual who has knowledge or experience in a given area of expertise, who's willing and able to share that knowledge with another. Now, the two most important words in that definition are willing and able. Now, the willing means that this individual is committed to the, spending the time and committed to the development of that mentee. In addition to that, the able means they actually have the skills to be a mentor and to function in that role. One of the historical misperceptions around mentoring is if somebody was good at what they did, they'd automatically be a good mentor. And we're saying that's not true. It takes different skills to be good at doing something than it does to be able to share that knowledge with another. A mentor needs to have the communication skills and the relationship building skills and the coaching skills and those types of skills that it takes to be able to share the knowledge with another. Now, you need to also qualify your mentees. Another historical misperception about mentoring is that if I'm a mentee and I'm going to be in a mentoring program, that means I'm going to get promoted. And it's almost as if mentoring and promotion are synonymous. And we're saying that's not true. Mentoring is about development. And if development helps an individual to gather more knowledge, gather more skills, and to take on more complex assignments, that's great. But mentoring is not synonymous with promotion. So you need to make sure that you have got your mentees. They understand that and that they're not going into the mentoring program assuming that they're going to get promoted. But they're in there for development. They're in there for all the right reasons and what they're doing. So make sure you qualify both your mentors and your mentees. If you don't, your program won't be successful because your partnerships won't be successful. And then you need to create an enrollment platform. There has to be an easy way for mentors and mentees to find out about each other and to be matched and paired. 
one of the things that we suggest is that there is a place in your enrollment platform that allows individuals to easily have information uh, like a CV or a bio and what they're doing. There also needs to be a way for mentees to identify what it is they want to learn and mentors to be able to talk about the areas of expertise they have and then find each other, whether it's through a administrative matching or whether it's through a self-matching that the mentee is able to do. But you've got to make sure this is an easy way for them to do it. They have to be able to get on that platform. It has to be an easy enrollment. It has to be an easy way to find each other. It has to be an easy way to be able to work together or it won't be successful in what you're doing. And then you need to have training. And we're going to specify here live training. Now that could either be in a workshop or it could be in a webinar format. But don't depend on just you know, e-learning or um, just, you know, sending out some pamphlets or booklets or whatever it is and assume that's going to work. I remember we worked with one organization and they had sent out all kinds of participant materials to mentors and mentees. And guess what wasn't getting read? So we actually took them through some webinars because this was an organization that was spread out throughout the world. But it, when it comes to mentoring, because there are so many different perceptions and misperceptions. Individuals need to be able to interact and ask questions. They need to be able to understand exactly what's going on. And most of all, as the program administrator, you need to make sure that they understand and you're communicating clearly with them and that they understand what a mentor is, what a mentee is, what mentoring is, and what the program's all about. And chances are you can't be sure that that's happening with just sending out some participant materials. So you need to have some kind of live training. And again, could be webinar, could be workshop, and where they can ask questions and what they're doing. We offer training for mentors, for mentees, managers and supervisors, and program administrators. And we do that in webinars, we do it in workshops all the things that are necessary to make sure that everybody understands and feels comfortable in the role that they're going to take on. And then you need to have reminders. Don't just assume when somebody went through the training they got it all. Make sure that you follow up with reminders. And if those are automated on a web-based platform, that makes it even easier for notifications and emails and being able to keep in touch with the mentors and mentees. There also needs to be a learning plan. Now, the learning plan is going to have the goals and objectives on it. It's going to have some due dates. Individuals need to be able to really illustrate what it is they want to accomplish and then track to those accomplishments. Are they meeting the activities, the mentee set with their mentor? And then the administrator, you need to be able to see some of these plans because you've got to make sure that those track back to the business objectives that you set up for the program and being able to do that. And if you've done all these things, then you're going to very easily be able to track and report on success of the program. One of the things that, that we have seen in being able to report on success is that individual administrators like the idea of being able to push a button and create a report. Uh, versus having to put all the different spreadsheets together that they've had uh, in their possession in doing this. The way that we've helped some of our clients, from a user standpoint, they're able to match by that career level, by department, location, and skills. So they've got all these ways in which they can do their matching and pairing, whether that is self-matching, that the mentee can lead, which is a great way to have a higher level of engagement in the program and the partnership, or it can be through administrator matching. And you may have some programs, we see this most often around high potentials or diversity programs and doing that, in which the administrator, and especially if it's a large program, may have some ideas of individuals that the mentee has no idea um, where the individual that's sitting in um, Paris is going to help them 
in doing that, but the administrator does. So the administrator can also help. And again, there's learning plans and goals so that the mentee can track what it is they're doing. The mentor can help the mentee and track how the mentee is doing it. And again, that administrator can look at those and make sure those goals and objectives are going to help get the organization where they want to go. And then one of the things that we offer is flash mentoring, and this is really great. It's being able to get into the database and let's say you're working on a project or, or something that's short term and you need to find somebody that possibly was working on the same project or I know with one organization because it was a research organization they wanted to tap into somebody that was doing the same kind of research they were more short term again it's it's um, you know looking at you know looking for a specific mentor on a specific subject or a specific focus or keywords in being able to do that now we've helped our administrators because they've got access to surveys and the surveys you know uh, help to find out you know is everything on track um, you know and we've even there's many surveys in there so you don't have to wait for six months to do one but you can do one on a regular basis also helping with communications notifications that you can set up and go out automatically email blasts as they are and then again, reporting and tracking. And like I said, I can remember the individual saying that they really were having a problem because everything was on spreadsheets and whenever they wanted to be able to uh, run a report, they had to go through about seven or eight different spreadsheets. It takes a lot of time in doing that. So a couple of last things that we want to cover, and those are some case studies that, that we have of, of our clients. One of our clients was a large global banking institution and they want an automated global mentoring program and they wanted it to have it available throughout the organization and what they were doing. So here's what we did for them. We integrated their employee data with their HRIS system. We also made sure they had a seamless login experience through single sign-on in doing that. Uh, they had the self-matching capabilities, so everybody, every mentee could go in and they could find a mentor for themselves. So it was very self-managed by doing it that way. And then they also had surveys so that they could collect data at any point in time and be able to report on it and doing that. Now the outcome was 99% of the users logged into the portal. That was almost 12, excuse me, 2,000 active users. 37% of the users were matched, which came to almost 400 mentors and over 800 mentees in being able to do that. And their survey responses indicated at 40% satisfaction in being able to do this as they went through. It was so successful, they're going on to phase two. And phase two is going to be some smaller programs that are start targeted specifically for high potentials. But the first phase went so well, they're ready to go to phase two. Now, another organization we work with is a leading car manufacturing company. And they were having some problems recruiting financial professionals. So we helped them launch a finance program from a pilot phase in English. And then also the second after that, they launched additional pilots, excuse me, pilots in European and non-European languages. And the mentoring relationships then were able to be made across the globe. And then what was able to happen is they're now branching out to other departments uh, in the company and taking that forward. The outcome was that pilot program was so successful that a client extended it one year and they now are going to an enterprise-wide solution. Now, the next phase is, again, adding an additional departments because people are saying, wow, that was such a success in the finance area. We want our department to be a part of this also. And again, taking that even uh, to an enterprise-wide and letting more and more employees benefit from mentoring. So, Sarah, would you take us through our last poll, please? Sure, Judy. Our last poll is, Based on today's presentation, where do you think that mentoring can help your organization or financial department the most? Is it A, career pathing or career development, B, 
B, global knowledge share, C, leadership development or succession planning, D, retention and engagement, or E, talent acquisition? We're over 20%, over 40. Almost to 70. Okay, the voting has slowed. Judy, it looks like 47% chose A, career pathing or career development. Okay, and that's what we know from the work that we do. It's that career pathing, career development that is most important to financial professionals in, in going forward. So that was the focus of what we wanted to do today. We're glad we hit that for you in going forward. Um, any other you know, uh, questions or information that we can supply to you around that, we'd be glad to. But, it, but again, this is um, actually, you know, like I said, tracking with everything that, that we know. So at this point in time, uh, Sarah, what questions do we have? Well, Judy, we have a couple of questions. The first one is, how do you measure success for the program? Okay, this, this is one that comes up every single time when uh, we have webinars is, how do you measure success? There, there really are going to be two types of measurements that you're going to go through. One is going to be qualitative. And you're really looking at how do people feel about the program. And normally you're going to get information there. You'll do that through a survey. Um, you know, asking people did you know did were they satisfied with the matching they had? Were they satisfied with the um, program overall? It's 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 how they felt about doing that the program overall and their um, experience. The other kind of is going to be quantitative, and you need to have qualitative measurements and you need to have quantitative. And the quantitative measurements are going to be those that begin to tell you exactly what percentage of goals the mentees were able to work on that met those business objectives you were able to do. Uh, it's going to be, we have organizations and, and part of what they measure, you were talking about that onboarding, they're able to shorten the learning curve of getting people up to speed faster than they do without mentoring. Or another way might be the percentage of individuals, usually after you've had your first phase of your program, how many individuals sign up to be a part of the program again or how many new people come in to do that. It's important to have both types of measurements, qualitative and quantitative. If you have got a great, you find out qualitatively, then everybody loves the program. You don't have any return on investment. It's not helping you with your organizational objectives. You haven't got a good program. If you're getting great measurements and doing those things, but nobody likes the program, you still haven't got a good program. So you've got to have both qualitative and quantitative. Are you ready for our next question? Yes. What is the difference between mentoring and sponsorship? Ah, that's a good one. And it's coming up more and more all the time. When we go through uh, and do you know, work with organizations, we encourage them to um, communicate the difference between coaching and mentoring, because those are seem to be um, one of those things that are, are very confusing. And now what we're seeing is the difference between coaching and mentoring and sponsorship uh, in doing that. We see the differences the, between mentoring and sponsoring. A mentor may help to sponsor an individual, but the main focus of a mentoring partnership is development, where the main focus of a sponsorship or sponsoring is after development. It's kind of like it's taking that on after. The individuals develop, they're ready to go, then you're going to sponsor them, try to help them through the organization, and you know, 
as they as they move forward. As I said, a mentor just may naturally because they know the mentee, they know a lot about them, may help to sponsor, but they're more focused on the development in doing that, where the sponsor is absolutely focused on moving that individual forward in their career, but the assumption is they're developed, they're ready to go in being able to do that. So an individual could have both. They could have a mentor that's helping their, them in certain areas and a sponsor that's helping them very specifically to move them forward in their career. That's, that's what we see as the difference, but it's, like I said, it's becoming more and more popular. For our next question, for effectiveness of mentoring in finance, one of the items was career growth through networking. Finance sometimes are responsible on popular initiatives like cost control, credit control, et cetera. In such cases, how is this achieved? <laughs> yeah, and, and um, I'm, I'm smiling uh, as, as I was listening to that question because it's very true. I mean, it's the finance department that when somebody wants to do something and finance says we can't do it, it goes back to what I was talking about before where you know, if, if you're in sales or you're in production or you're in marketing or something like that, you're kind of focused on one area, your area, where finance has got to look at the whole organization in, in what you're doing. So that's where that networking and knowledge sharing really comes in. First of all, being able to network with other parts of the organization and share knowledge from just the standpoint of this is why we do what we do. So when you've got that, you know, product or the production area that says, you know, well, how come we can't get money for X, you know, that knowledge sharing and that networking becomes very important because you've got a connection there. Also, the networking uh, becomes, and knowledge sharing becomes important because you can network and share knowledge with other financial professionals either within your organization or outside of your organization to find out how they handle those types of situations. So I think that, you know, the, the mentoring and the networking uh, for a financial, because sometimes you kind of feel like you're out there on your own. It's you against the world um, as it goes forward and in, because you're the ones that have got the purse string. I hope that, I hope that was clear because as I said, I know what that can feel like. For our next question, what's the best way to recruit volunteers or get them to volunteer? Um, I, I assume that's kind of towards, because normally we only get that question when it has to do with mentors. So how do you recruit mentors um, and get them to volunteer? One of the historical misperceptions around mentoring is if I, does somebody ask me to be a mentor, and I decide to do this, uh, this is going to be a lifetime commitment and, and I just can't do this. I can't take this on. It just seems too daunting. But if you're able to say to an individual that you know has all the skills and everything to be a mentor, if you're saying to them, what we need from you is to be able to meet with the mentee about two hours a month and you know for a period of you know eight, ten or twelve months in doing this, that's that sounds a little more doable. So what we find is the biggest reason that there's a problem recruiting mentors is they just don't understand what's required. They're going with their you know old historical uh, misperceptions about it or you know other things that they've heard. So so make sure you're clear. Put some timelines on it, and so that it doesn't sound quite so daunting. For our next question. In the annual objectives of an employee, will it be okay to add mentoring to senior roles or how to kind of make it mandatory for senior roles to mentor more junior roles when the mentor demand is very high? I have to tell you that I don't think mandatory mentoring works. I think that mentors and mentees both should volunteer to, to take on those roles. If somebody tells you you have to do something that you don't really want to do, you'll figure out how not to do it. There's a gotcha in there somewhere. And the, if you have an individual that's at a senior level and you're telling them they have to mentor someone and they don't really want to or don't understand how to, 
what what that role encompasses or don't have the skills to do that the person that is going to suffer the most in that situation is the mentee and again keep in mind that you know I don't know about you know your own specific organization but a lot of individuals who are in very senior level positions may be in those positions because they were good at what they did and they've come up through the ranks because they were good at certain things but again they may not have the skills to share that knowledge with another remember the definition of a mentor had to do with willing and able and willing is I volunteer to do this it's not voluntold it's volunteer for our next question we aren't in financial services but would like to launch a program for our finance department are there any differences I don't think so no because a, when we talk about we work with a lot of financial services organizations but this particular uh, webinar had to do with mentoring for the financial professional and that financial professional may be in a financial services organization or it may be in a financial function within an organization so everything that we talked about is going to be exactly the same you want to make sure that uh, you have gone through and you've identified your business goals and objectives you want to make sure that uh, you have qualified your mentors and mentees you want to make sure there's a easy enrollment platform live training uh, mentoring learning plan so everything that we talked about is going to be the same your matching criteria may change a little bit you may decide that it's not two levels it's one or it's peer or whatever it is but pretty much the same in, in everything you're doing well Judy I think we're about out of time do you have any final thoughts no um, I just want to encourage everybody to join our uh, LinkedIn uh, Thought Leaders Club so that you can receive information that, that on that poll that we had that having to do with the skills that the organization I think you'll find that the uh, results will be very interesting and if you have any additional questions be sure and let us know and I'd just like to thank you for your participation Sarah thanks Judy thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar if you'd like a copy of today's slideshow or a recording of today's webinar you can find links to both on our Mentoring Thought Leaders group page on LinkedIn later today. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free to email us at info at .com. We truly value your feedback on our webinars. Thanks again for coming, and have a fabulous day.